talk about politics. And first I'm going to have to explain a bit about American politics, and then I'm going to get into queer politics. So this might seem like a rant that's coming on, but it's all very important. And I am really boring. So first, America is a two-party system. It has always been a two-party system. Um, <laughs> literally, there's there have always been two parties, and they they have always disagreed on economics. Always serious. The idea of how where this country is going economically has always defined our two major political parties. Um, next thing, obviously we have states with state governments, and then there's the federal government. Now, um, it says in the Constitution that the federal law is much more important and overrules state laws. We had a huge... There are seven major government issues that queer people face. Marriage rights, hospital visitation rights adoption rights, employment protections, housing protections, hate crime protections, and protections in school. Now it's worth noting that many queer people are diagnosed with having mental illnesses because of their gender identity or sexual orientation in the United States today. But because the government can't do anything about that, I'm not gonna be focusing on those issues. Out of those seven issues, the federal government only has a say over five of them marriage rights, hospital visitation rights if you are enrolled in a government medical program like Medicaid or Medicare, employment protections if you work for the federal government, housing discrimination, recognition of hate crimes. The reason the federal government doesn't have any say over schools or adoption is because those are both states' rights as lined out in the Constitution. So the federal government doesn't have any say in those. The federal government's stance on each of these is that they do not recognize marriage equality. They do recognize hospital visitation rights. They do recognize employment protections. They do not have any laws on housing protections. They do have a law recognizing hate crimes based on sexual orientation but they do not have a law recognizing hate crimes based on gender identity. Now, the statistics I am about to list are from an article called Gay Rights in the U.S. State by State by The Guardian. Um, and for the purposes of the article and the statistics, uh, Washington, D.C. As li is listed as its own state. Um, to non-Americans, Washington, D.C. is our capital and by federal law it is not allowed to be in any state. So 10 states recognize full marriage rights, 17 states give hospital visitation rights, 19 states allow same-sex couple adoptions, 17 states provide protection from employment discrimination, 17 states provide protection from housing discrimination. 14 states recognize both sexual orientation and gender identity as motivators for hate crimes. And 19 states have legislation protecting all queer students from being bullied. Only four states and Washington, D.C. give full rights to all queers in all of these areas. Now, it's important to note that for those previously listed numbers, both full rights based on sexual orientation and full rights based on gender identity were included. This is important to note because in queer politics, transgender people tend to be left behind far more than people of whatever sexual orientation. There are many gay people who don't recognize the legitimate existence of multisexual people, and there are many multisexual and homosexual people who don't recognize the legitimate existence 
of transsexuals and transgender people. This is also true for straight people. Just because a straight person accepts the legitimate existence of homosexuality, it does not mean that they accept multisexuality or transgenderism. In fact, there are less straight people who are willing to accept being transgender than a person being homosexual, which is why there are far less protections out there for trans people than there are for gay or bisexual people. It is for this reason that when the Human Rights Campaign, or the HRC, one of the largest pro-LGBT political organizations in the United States, needs to budge on something, they tend to budge on trans rights, which is not okay because trans people are getting killed more and more than LGB people are. So I leave you with these depressing facts. I know a lot of people say that with this shitty economy, we need to be focusing on economics instead of queer rights, but not a day goes by in my life that I am not affected by the fact that I am queer instead of straight and everything else that comes along with it. And that would be true no matter which state I lived in.